I would say the first outcome to the Barras was probably in the early 70s. On a Sunday, everything was closed, so it was the only place that was open. And you just see the atmosphere and listen to the pattern. And then when I was about 13, 14, I got a part-time job in a cafe on London Road. One memory I've got to this cafe was I had to open a cupboard to take out a box of sugar cubes. And there was these big beetles crawling all over the sugar cubes. So I told the owner, and she just lifted the beetles out, put them in the bin, and told me to put the sugar cubes out for people to use that day. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, and ever since then, really, we just come to the barras because it's nostalgia. I think it's just part of our past. We don't come as regular as we used to because, obviously, the barras isn't as busy, but we still like coming because sometimes you do get a wee bit of the Glasgow pattern. Collectibles. I collect weird things. And I, I, I just like the experience of being in a sort of a native Glasgow environment. Most of the guys that sell stuff and the women that sell stuff here are all local. And it's just like it's just a throwback to when I was a kid. Because my, my first memories of the Barras as a, as a wee boy, my mother's mother stayed in Woodcurst Street. And it was number 30 on the ground floor in a tenement. And as a wee boy, about, I don't know, six or seven, we used to go down there at the weekend, and uh, in our front room, it always kind of dimly lit, and in the back, <laughs> in the bed, in the alcove, the bed alcove at the back was our brother, my uncle Johnny, who was lying there. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing, but he was just lying there all the time. And I used to stand at the big window, look out, into the throng of people at the barras, and it's just where the, the two the sort of wooden sp spring doors are, on the Her house looked right into that, practically. So you see people coming and going and hear all the, I tell the noises and the bright colours and stuff like that. But I remember the guy who used to sell the crockery and the guy who done the towels. I don't know their names, because I only wee guy. And it was just great fun just watching it and then maybe going out later on and listening to it. But one of the great things about my granny's flat location was the uh, right hand side. There's a cake stall and it sold everything for you. Battenberg cake, cherry cake, sultana cake, most sorts of cake. And you might well, Desperate fear, Matty, take you over there on the way home and buy cakes to get up the road. And my granny used to eat a thing called potted heed, right? Now, I don't know what's in potted heed, but it's it just meat with gelatin in it and a wee tub and a wee spoon. <laughs> and they told me that it's the sheep's brains that we're eating. That's that one. So there's a wee guy of six or seven, you're like, what not? And my granny loved it, she's having a, on a piece and a cup of tea and stuff. Aye, just that, 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 that's it. And as I grew up, well, I suppose I, I went there regularly just to see what I could buy for, cheap, for cheapness. And then Sandra said, you sort of fade away from it. But as, as adults, I couple we can buy every now and again just for the experience of being here. A couple of years ago, we were in one of the, the sort of new markets and there was a painter there called Robin Aye. Miller. Um, and I think he was either a draftsman or an architect and he liked to paint um, as a hobby. And we bought a couple of paintings. And one we bought, it was a, a girl with a dog. And we had unfortunately not long lost our dog. And my, my daughter was very close. So we bought that to represent them. But also when I was a wee kid, I don't know if you know this, but in Glasgow they used to call a cone a pokey hat. Okay, because the Italians, it was a poke, you know. And then they put a hat on it with ice cream. And he had done a picture of an ice cream seller with two kids. And my husband went and asked him if we'd paint one and write on it pokey hat rather than ice cream. So we've got that picture and it was like an oil pit picture. Uh, but we just heard recently there that he's now um, in a, a nursing home, you know. No. But what a lovely man, really nice man. And he probably could have told you a lot more about the barras than we would ever know, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, it was good to be able to get those things from him as well. It was a circus. You know, and you could come every weekend and never hear the same thing. Even though the guy or the lady was selling the same thing, you never heard the same thing because the part from the audience was different, you know. So, yeah, it was a day out, basically a cheap day out. If you had money, you spent it, and if you didn't, you didn't have to, you know. I like to think people, comedians like Chick Murray and Billy Conley probably got a lot of their part here. Yeah. And there's Bertley or maybe intentionally, I don't know. But, but it used to be when you when you had visitors coming to stay, the first place you brought them was the Barras. Aye. You know, just for that. 
experience. I experience, mm -hmm. yeah. And unfortunately, it's dying. And it'd be nice to see it getting revamped a wee bit, yeah. you know. I was, down, I was down here two days ago with my daughter, Bill's Tool Store, Pearson's Electrical, and to do Rumbling Tum Cafe for, for breakfast and stuff like that. So even during the week, it's still. There's still alive. things going on. Yeah. yeah. Still the first place you run go to B and Q. Can I say that? I don't know. Run go to B and Q. Go to Bill's Tool Stores or Pearson's. But I, I would yeah. like to see it get more energy about it. Like bring in things that people in the area need, like fresh fruit and vegetables. Things you know, things that folk are going to use. There's no point. It's lovely having the antiques and things like that. But a lot of people can't afford that. What they need is day to day things, and I think a place like the Barras could give that to people. Do you know what I mean? Most folk who are Glaswegian will have a story about the Barras, good or bad. <laughs>